In this example, we're going to solve a trigonometric equation, equation such that 7 times sine of pi over 6x plus 2, um, and then for four smallest positive solutions. So they put the smallest positive solutions only because we know that sine is periodic and we can get infinitely many solutions. So we just need to make sure that our x solutions are going to be positive, and just the first four. So I think the first thing we could do is graph the, these two pieces of um, the equation. So the first thing I did was I took sine, 7 sine of pi over 6 x and then equal to 2 and then I solved for sine of pi over 6 x and I got 2 sevenths. And so this is what I went ahead and I graphed. So I went ahead and graphed this and I got these four solutions. Right here, right here, right here, and right here. And I think I'll call this solution one, solution two, solution three, and solution four. And just to clarify, the blue line here is y equal to sevenths, and the curve is the sine of pi over 6x. So I graphed, this is a tool that you can use for everything, is if you have an equation you want to solve, you can just graph each side of the equation and then find the intersection points. And I did this because I wanted you to see where they were. So you could see that um, the first one is between 0 and 1. The second one is between 5 and 6. The third one is between um, 12 and 13. And the last one is between 17 and 18. And we could see that um, the one period of sign is from 0 to 12, and then a new period starts at 12. So you can see that 1 and 3 are going to be identical, and it's just like one revolution around. So the first thing we will want to do is work with that angle, right, and let theta be equal to pi over 6x. This is the best thing to do, because if you do, then you have um, sine of theta equal to 2 sevenths. And then when you solve, you get theta equal to inverse sine of 2 sevenths. This is great, and we'll keep in the back of our mind um, the pi over 6x. And remember that this, on a side note, that if theta is equal to pi over 6x, this implies that x is equal to 6 over pi times theta, right? So we'll just keep that in the back of our mind. So since we solved for theta, I would stop there. We're going to put it in the calculator in a second. But we do see that the next solution, so, so this would be um, almost solution 1, right? We just have to we put it in terms of x in just a minute. But for now, this solution, theta, is going to be like our first solution we get in that first quadrant. So the where else is sine going to be positive, right? So if I go over here, you know, I always like writing a little side margin notes. Remember that all students take calculus. So this theta is going to be, I'm just making this up, so theta is somewhere in this first quadrant. Where else is sine positive? Well, sine is positive in the second quadrant. So now I need to find um, the angle such that theta is the reference angle in the second quadrant. Well, if this is um, 0, pi over 2, and pi, I can easily find it by taking pi minus theta. So for... The next solution, I would have pi minus theta. No, that didn't. I would have theta minus pi, meaning that I would just take the inverse of sine of 2 sevenths minus pi. So this will give us 
our um, that second solution. So it's not we're not there yet, but this is going to become our first solution number one. This will become our second solution number two. Now these are the key ones because now the first solution here, let me get a highlighter, is going to correspond with the angle um, number three. Because why? Well, again, don't forget the period. The period goes from zero to 12 and we start a whole revolution. So that's perfect. And with solution number two, that's in the next period as well. So two would relate to four. So all we have to add is two pi to these solutions. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin that process. So essentially, um, let's find the solutions. We're ready to go. So for the first solution, number one, is going to be theta equal to the inverse sine of two sevenths, but theta is equal to pi over six x. So this means that um, pi over six x is equal to the inverse sine of two sevenths, and x will be equal to inverse sine of two sevenths times six over pi. Okay, so um, for angle number two, theta is equal to inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi, but again, pi over six x is equal to the inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi. So this means that x will be equal to inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi all times six over pi. Great, so we're almost done. So the third angle, again, remember, don't forget that angle one is going to relate to angle three, except one revolution over. So here, if theta would equal inverse sine of two sevenths plus one revolution over plus two pi, right? Make it go around once. But theta is equal to, again, pi over six x, which is inverse sine of two sevenths plus two pi, which means x is going to equal the inverse sine of two sevenths plus two pi times six over pi. So the fourth angle, recall that that relates to two. Oops. One, two. And that is one revolution over. So remember that theta would be equal to inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi plus a two pi, but remember that theta is equal to pi over six x, which is equal to the inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi plus two pi, and then x, this implies x is equal to the inverse sine of two sevenths minus pi plus two pi, all times six over pi. Now this seems like a lot, but it's not. I encourage you just to use, put it in the calculator and edit your calculator. And so when we get these um, angles from our calculator, um, this will be the first four positive solutions. So let's go back to the calculator and instead of graphing, we'll go ahead and put these values in one, two, three, and four. Number one, which gives us inverse sine of two sevenths times six over pi and we'll get point five five three three or point five five three four 
three, four. We'll star it. Okay, let's go ahead and do the second one um, where it's the reference angle. I'm not going to rewrite it. I'll just go ahead and edit this piece and put like a big parenthesis here. Pi minus, there we go, 5.4466. Five point four four six six. Now let's do this other one where we add two pi and then times six over pi. So let's edit this one. So this will be two pi. I'll change the subtraction to plus and I get twelve point five five. Three, four. Okay, and the last one, we'll go ahead and do um, uh, the revolution of number two. So here I'm going to change this two to pi minus that. Maybe do an extra parenthesis because that would be the first one. And then plus 2 pi. And we get 17.4466. Okay, so here are the angles. And if we actually go look up here we can check and make verify that they are within these ranges and as well as in the show answer at the bottom they were they were it so the trick here when you're solving these cuz you're going to see these much more in your academic career in mathematics and even physics and chemistry maybe that um if always rewrite your angle to be theta and then do the revolutions and do the reference angle and then come back and solve for x in these equations here.